Hi, this is Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Welcome to the video and especially welcome to my new subscribers. Um, we have had a change of scenery, you might have noticed behind me. The studio has been revamped, that's probably the best word for it. Um, and we have a different backdrop and a different setup. And you might notice my lovely shiny pink new mat, which was my Mother's Day gift from my editor-in-chief. So whereas we used to sit side by side, Big P sits in the same position as he was, but my desk is now side onto the window instead of front onto the window. And the reason for that is because we've expanded into the room a bit. It's increased the size of the desk and moved some things that were in another room in here so that we have more better access to them. One last housekeeping thing. I want to do a greeting to people when I come on in the beginning of the video. Now, Gail Augustinelli, um, who you've probably heard me mention in the past, she does high and hugs. I'm going to do much love. And today's inaugural much love goes to Claire. Um, and thank you for the inspiration for this video. You probably don't know it, but you've inspired me to do so. Do this video. So um, thank you, Claire. So what are we doing, you ask? Well, today we're going to play with needles and pins. I would like to show you my take on making a pin cushion and two variations on that style. Also, I would like to make a needle case with pockets, but I haven't done a prototype, so we'll work along that together. But first of all, let's sort the pin cushions out. So this is my sample pin cushion that it was given to me many, many moons ago by a lady I used to work with. And she's made it out of a miniature plant pot. It's quite solid and it's fairly heavy based. So I've chosen to use a glass jar. You can get these from puddings and sometimes cream maybe, yeah. Um, or any sort of jar this sort of size, depending on how you want your pudding cushion. I want mine lower and flatter because this one's quite, quite tall. You can see the size difference there. But you could also, if you wanted a little diddy one and you were doing them for gifts, you might do them out of the little jars that you get the jam in so that I'll get a little baby one and you can make them as a present. You can stuff just the inside and just have it plain white or you can paint the outsides or decorate the outsides with decoupage whatever. So what I've done I've drawn a circle from the bottom of the jar onto my blue felt so that I can cut the circle out to put in the base. Now, most people aren't going to see the base, but I also want to put a circle on the base so that it's not clonking on the top. So I'm going to cover the inside of the base and the outside of the base. So I need to do a second circle. OK, are we all following so far? I do hope so. Two circles drawn. I've got my trusty sewing scissors. And like with um, cutting out with paper, you move the fabric or the material you're cutting opposed to the scissors and you're going to smooth the line. So my left hand's doing the turning, my right hand's staying the same. That's one. Actually, we're going to turn this one with, there's a little bit of marking on the side of this. I'm going to put that inside up, face up. Okay, so that's how it's going to be. We don't need to glue it or anything because when I put the K-Pox in and the ribbon and everything, it's not going to, it's not going to move. Now this one I won't glue on until we've done the, the rest of it. But nothing's going to go to waste. These odd bits here can go in a fabric cluster. So that will then go on there and I can trim it round if it overlaps a bit. Because the base of the jar is slightly smaller but it's difficult to actually get that. So what I'll do is stick it on and then trim it round afterwards. Actually I might just put a little bit of glue in the bottom because that is puckering up a little bit. So it's just a tiny little bit of stick glue just to hold the center down a bit now for my ribbon i've cut a length of ribbon from this lovely bumblebee ribbon and it's just the right height 
to go round my jar. So I'm just going to sit that in there. This is slightly too wide, so I'm going to trim this down a little bit. So once again, it's because of the shape of the jar, it's difficult to get an accurate reading of the bottom. So how's that? It's not, that looks a bit better here. Yeah, it's not sort of sliding up the sides so much. So where were we? We were doing the ribbon, weren't we? So I'm going to wind the ribbon round. And what I'm going to do, and until it's all in place, I'm going to use my little clips and to hold the ribbon in place with my little um, binder clips. And that will keep it in place while I'm putting the K-Pox in. Because if you glue it, you glue it from the pattern side onto the glass, you risk seeing your glue. Now I know my jar is three inches round, but I need to do a little bobbly bit over the top to actually stick the pins in. So I will need to do my circle for the top a bit wider than that. There we go. And then we get our cape box. And it needs to be fairly firm, but not so firm that you won't be able to push through it. But I do want it to fluff out over the top a little bit. Most of that is in, build the bounce on it. So that, that's my cloud stuffed in. Now, so I need a top and I've chosen dark blue for the top. But I need to do a three inch circle. So I found something to draw around, the lid of one of my big jars which is just over four and a half inches. So that should be plenty of fabric. So take these clips off and hold this down. Hold this on as centered as possible and then tuck this edge in. So I need to go between the ribbon and the cape box. one side pops up but you're getting the idea of how it should look <laughs> uh, I'm wondering whether I should glue it as I'm going right so what I need to do is glue the ribbon onto the edge of the, the blue on um, the top and then most of the way and put it in and then stuff it from the side I think that might work better glue or so so and then i can glue the last bit okay so i've got some thread sub threaded up here doesn't matter what uh, the um, thread is because it's not going to be seen make sure that it bumblebees the right way up that would help wouldn't it? and this needs to go onto the back of the ribbon hi guys just popping on to say that in a minute you'll see me unpicking what I'm just sewing now. I realised that the ribbon was shorter than the outside of the top circle. So I would need to pleat the circle onto an inside base to make it work. For this I used more felt um, so that the stitching did not show on the ribbon when I put the ribbon back in. Let's pop this back in here and do it a section at a time and then unravel it. Sorry guys, I thought this was a bit more straightforward than it's turning out to be. It's the ribbon that's causing the problem. So if I take the ribbon out and add a bit of felt, same length, same height, then I'm not going to be worried about spoiling the picture and it will tuck around and it won't show because it's the same colour. Now I'm going to sew this ribbon in the loop and then I'm going to put the blue on the inside of it and then attach the blue top to the dark blue non-ribbon bit. So felt to felt instead of felt to ribbon. Yeah you will see a slight tacking stitch but not majorly. I think we're winning folks. I think we're winning. And then so that is where that should go. Sew this felt now. So that's just tacked on. Now we've got to get this in here pleated. So to pleat it in. That's uh, the little wrinkles. Might need some more cotton again. 
Now I've got quite a bit of odds and sods of cottons to use up. So I've got a nice length of thread there to play with. Because it has got a bit of gib in it, so I can always pull it out a little bit if I need to. And I'm not pulling the cotton particularly tight on the pleats, so I do have a little bit of play in it if need be. We're on for a bit of a false start. I think we might be winning on this particular one. And I've still got my bumblebees in there, so I'm happy with that. Lovely, Chadley. Just stretching it out a little bit so that we can get our ring. And we're sewing inside the ring, just tacking it on. I'm going to try and keep this inside the ring, just on the top, like we were going to do with the bumblebee, but with the bumblebee, the ribbon wasn't quite so easy to manage, shall we say, as the felt is. So I'm just loosely tacking this round, tucking it as I go, and so round to about here, and then we'll have this much gap to stuff the K-pox in. I want to put a little bit of tiny bit of fabric glue on this felt to stick to the back side of the ribbon and that should work fine. It's my Hobbycraft fabric glue and I've got a little plastic spatula which I'm just going to take a little bit out of the top because it doesn't pour very well anymore. Spread it around the outside, inside I should say, of the ribbon. Just a little bit of glue sits with it and around the outside edge of the jar. Then the blue felt will stick to that. There comes the tricky bit. Squish that like that and then let it open up. And then we've got to go through and push everything into position. Slide it down. Now hopefully the K-Pots will now push it in place. It's funny, you sit and you think, oh, I can do that, I can do this. And then when it comes to doing it, there's all sorts of issues that you hadn't thought would happen. So we're pushing out to the edges, just keep stuffing and pushing it down. So this edge doesn't seem to want to go down. Come on, down you go. Let's click you in this way, shall we? That's better. There you go. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next project and wait for this glue to dry a little bit more before I fiddle around with it anymore. Now the next project hopefully should be a little bit more straightforward and we want to do, or well, I want to do a pin cushion that has a wristband to it. I was checking out sizes i think that might be slightly too big basically you need two shapes whatever shape you choose that is going to be suitable to house on your wrist so you can have a small circle you can have a square an oblong i was going to do this oblong but thinking about it it's too big now i think a smallish circle would be fine now for the wristband you can use a scrunchie and then just sew your padding onto your scrunchie so you won't have to make a, a new band you can use a hairband same sort of idea but less floofy now i'm going to make my own strap and i've got these little velcro squares which i'm going to sew to each end like that and then i'll have my it's a roll round and secure on my wrist but I want that to be ruler width yeah ruler width is fine so if I just draw down the side here I can measure my wrist now you want it tight enough that it's not going to flop around but loose enough that it's not going to cut off the circulation so I just want to hold that in place and just put a little line where it meets so I know where to put my other bit of velcro so this bit of Velcro here would be, be perfect because it's just the right size. And then that bit can be sewn on that way. I'm not going to faff with sewing that at the moment. I'll come back to that. That's your wristband. So now we want to do our little circle. You can make them into hearts, into little square shapes and do them on like an angle of a diamond. I seem to be hitting on a circle theme at the moment. So. Now, I'm going to use embroidery thread for this one. If you're using fabric with a pattern, you need to have 
right size up, uh, wrong size together. We're not going to turn it inside out. We're just going to stuff it as it is. And I'm going to blanket stitch round the outside edge. You can run a stitch round as well as afterwards if you find it's gaping a bit. But if I do my blanket stitch, then we'll come back to it and I can do red cotton all the way around on a normal running stitch if if it's required. So I'm going to tie a knot, tuck it on the inside, so that's secure there. Then you want to get the edges to the edges, come over the back, and just come in about the same distance you come up previously, and wrap the thread round the back of the needle and pull up. Then you want to have your thread hold it with the thumb. It, make sure your edges are level then come up whatever I'm doing them about every quarter inch halfway there we don't want to go all the way so we want to leave a gap of about that much all right so we're getting a, an opening there but we need a little just a couple more stitches So we've got a little opening here. I'm leaving this on the thread because then I can finish it off once I've done the thing. Also, I need to get the centre here as to where this needs to be sewn on. More lovely cloudy K-box. But not, I don't want it too tight. That it's going to burst the stitches, but it should hold nicely. Wait, plump, but not overstuffed. It's puffy, it's just a pin. As long as you don't push it too far in, you won't get your hand. Right, I think that should do it. Now I'm going to push it right up inside for a minute, just so that I can sew the edges without catching the cave box. Now this thread I'm going to leave long, and I'm going to go in through the cave box, and come up through the middle, and leave the thread on, because I can use that then to sew band on. So we have now in position, a bit like a a watch on a watch strap and I'm just going to do a few running stitches making sure I've ca caught the um, felt behind to attach that to and finish up this thread. Now this isn't going to be seen because it's a bit, a bit on your wrist so try not to make it too lumpy because you don't want it irritating your wrist so that's why I'm spreading the stitches out and I'll put them all in one place. So now we have your pin cushion which sits there and when we've sewn the velcro on it will basically strap to the wrist and hold that in place and then you can just pop your pin in now i put that pin right in very deep and i can feel it just about grazing my skin and most people like a little bit sticking out so you can get hold of it anyway so that's how it works so you can do your thing and you've got your hands free do your bits and pieces you can also when you're sewing you can stick your needle in there to hold it in place before you cut your thread or whatever right so this bit doesn't matter which way around you've got your, your soft bit and you've got your curly bit doesn't matter which way around as long as they are in a position to join up with each other it's just a matter of sewing around the square so with the velcro being this way lengthways you've got some adjustment on it as well so make it smaller or bigger to suit whoever's wrist it's going to be on. Now the other velcro I've got are these velcro dots and they're sticky but for this purpose I would even sew those on and you maybe just put a dab of glue on behind as well. They're okay on paper but I wouldn't trust them to stick to the belt. Now this square came off a ribbon that wrapped around a cake and I rescued the ribbon and took the velcro off and I thought oh that'll be useful sometime and now's that time so thank you to whoever's birthday it was and whoever's allowed me to rescue the ribbon and the velcro terrible when I go to parties I save the wrapping paper and I save any ribbons that were wrapped around the gifts or anything like that so let's test this contraption out shall we take it for a test drive so it should be quite easy to fasten on your own. It will go nice and loose so you can have it you now on someone that's got a chunky wrist. 
and it's quite comfortable to wear it's not rubbing the velcro is not rubbing on me because it's actually underneath the felt so you're not going to have the irritation of the velcro on your arm that's nice and firm i'm waggling it about and it's not coming off it's not falling backwards and forwards so happy with that right now the glue's dry-ish it's not 100 percent but it's dry enough not to be sliding all over the place i'm going to add a little bit more kpox in here that's better and then this lip here is where i'm going to glue the top bit as it folds down but it will still puff up and then i'm going to have to use these clips along the rim to hold it down but first of all i need to sew this bit up here hmm Okay, well, this is a good job. This is just for me because the bumblebees are upside down. What a wonky donkey. So I'm just going to use this red thread that I've got left over just to tack it in. Nice and tall. Tuck you in. I, when I put it round the edges earlier, I preempted myself and it's all worn off. So I'm just going to work our way round. Now, if the fabric glue doesn't hold, I might have to revert to using my glue gun but I'm hoping this will hold it hopefully they will hold it enough that's nice firm we've done our pin cushion section now we go to the needle section of our pins and needles now I think I want my pin case somewhere around four by five as a finished article so I'm going to have the green or the brown on the outside. I think I'll have the green. So what I need is a 10. So I'm measuring up from the side of my board. It's giving me my 10 line. So five folded onto the 10. And then I want four up. So I measure my four. That will be the size of my legal case. Now I want pockets on my case. I'm going to have mine this way. I want pockets on the back cover so I need another colour that will go all the way along and maybe about one and a half I don't know if I can do that on my cutting machines no I don't I can but let's give it a try and that will straighten the edge up for me no it's giving me a line to follow so that helps so they need tacking round and I'm going to use my blue so I've got to the corner now and turning a corner should be pretty straightforward. You just have your fabric pointing the direction you want to go in and put your needle down just past the stitch you've just done. Bring your needle back up again um, for the length of the stitch and then wrap your thread round. Hopefully that will turn the corner for you. Just going to do a couple of overtons. I mean, I'm not going to fill it up here, but I'll just show you what I will do it, do with it. A safety pin, another safety pin here. Maybe on this one, I could put, say, my curved needles, and then maybe my thinner needles in the next one, and they can just go in a nice line like that. And then I can see what size it is, and they're not crisp. I mean, here it's complete and utter. This one's a bit bent, so I might have to get rid of that one. The darning needles, put in another one. Like they could go that way. There's a nice and long like that. And then you've got them all nice and neatly in a case. And then you put your bits and pieces, put my clips on the pocket maybe. Uh, and I've had these bits like this all threaded up and then nothing on the outside which will hopefully mean you don't get stabbed with it so much I get the idea so I shall transfer all my needles and bits a little bit later I'm going to sew the other pocket in here with the green I'm going to do some lines up here to make these pockets slightly smaller so that they will hold things better we have our wrist pin cushion my bead needles when i do bead work i have bead needles and i want you to put these they will slide slide in lovely in here so i may be 
do the other one with the three pockets for needle threaders and stuff but my bead needles can sit in here because they are always getting lost all these to try and house all my needles and pins and whatever maybe i should have put some more pages in but i could go back and add some layers on if i wanted to and do another row this side and flap it over but it will become a chunky monkey so that's that and that's that now let's check this little sound so how are you doing you're doing okay now you should be glued down enough now yeah that's it just give you a squeeze and shape you up so we have a bumblebees the right way up we have a little puffy bit at the top here to pop our pins in and there we go so we have the two pin cushions we have the needle case with pockets and our desk pin cushion wrist pin cushion well folks um, this and all future videos will be on a saturday we may if we can do them have a famous video during the week but we're going down to one video a week so much love everyone thanks for joining me and i'll see you in the next one bye bye my little cloud <laughs> my cloud's falling down